This is Ramses. And I'm the Vesper. And we're here to bring you another edition of Back in Time. Episode number 16. Where we take a look at something from the past that we still enjoy to this day. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. So we can bring you many more of these Back in Times in the future. Today's subject we're going to be looking at in honor of Turtles Month is... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Playmate Toy Commercials from the 80s and 90s. Yeah, everybody's going turtles crazy this month, so we are too, and we're going to show you some of the original toy commercials. And boy, did they have a lot of toys. There were so many to look through. Playmates toy line went from 1988 all the way to 1997. Little by little, it got weirder and stranger and more out there. Yeah, because what we had originally was stuff that followed closely to the actual cartoon, and then by the later part of the 90s, they went in every direction. And there are so many more toys that were made that never had a commercial. It's astounding if you just take a moment and look at this. All right, well, that just gives you a little taste of what we have in store here for you guys. I'm sure you all have stories of the figures you had remembering in the toy stores when you saw these. Well, we're going to bring those memories back to you because remember, every series is always based around selling a toy line, at least in the past it used to be, and this is no different. We're okay. going to look at a nice assortment of the toys from the beginning to the end. I think you guys are going to really have total power by the time we're done. So, right as we begin, we'll let you decide which one of these stuck close to the cartoons and which ones they took a lot of uh, liberties with. That's right, and we're going to start at the beginning. The first commercial that introduced just the toys. The original, original toy line, which consisted of 10 characters in total. That was it. And this is all 1988. So let's see where everything started. Very simple, but you're going to get used to this little jingle you're going to hear at the end here. Splinter the rat taught them each the ninja arts. Donatello, master of the staff. Leonardo, the katana blade. My God. Raphael, the sword. Don't run this at all, kids! And Michelangelo, the noon shackles. Radical! Uh, and master of the willing pizza. Hey, who had the pepperoni and ice cream? From Playmates. So, yeah. That was the original commercial that started it off for this wonderful toy line. And as you can see, they do a great job of showing you what each of the turtles are and who they are. Yeah, they mixed in animated moments, and this is from the cartoon itself. So this was running concurrent with the cartoon, and I thought it was very effective. And they have this very creative jingle. You're going to get used to this because they're going to use this for many years through all their commercials. Yes, that's right. Nine years. They will throw this at you to remind you that Playmate is your exclusive turtle toy maker. Boy, do they remind you and boy, do they sing it. It's very cool. Each turtle comes with their own weapon and they actually show all these weapons being used. So Leonardo's showing off his katana and then he'll slice a table in half. And then they have Raphael with his size and then he'll just use it on some blades coming by. So it's very effective that they show, yes, these are the weapons that each turtle figure comes with. They did not know that this is going to become one of the biggest toy lines ever made when they released it. They were like, oh, the cartoon's out. Let's just make some toys based on it. They didn't know what they had here. Overall, wonderful commercial, except for the fact all the voices are wrong, and they're just like a bunch of idiots. Plus, where are these globs on this pizza? Let's see. It looks like a piece of butter, egg, and some meatballs. I'm thinking something else totally different on that last one. So it's a funny commercial. Let us know what you thought of the original commercial. This is where it started. We want to show you this started, and now we're going to move on to the next one, because this one's actually pretty interesting, too. And if you thought that brought back memories, this one is going to bring back even more memories, because... The turtles need to get around. They can't walk, but they need a vehicle. And what's more iconic than the turtles party wagon? That's right. This was the iconic vehicle that the turtles used to move around. This is iconic. Every kid and their mother and their brother wanted this vehicle for turtles. And now we're going to show you the advertisement that first showed the availability and usage of the party wagon. Get out of the way, bad dudes! It's the Turtles Party Wagon. The wacky attack van means good times for the green guys and hard knocks for the foot, especially with the tenderizer. Yeah, and it's a big hit everywhere we go. And look, here comes the turtle cycle with its working handlebar slingshot and armored sidecar. It'll drive Shredder crazy. Yeah, let's step on it. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Playmates. Well, what do you think of that? It's not only the turtle van, they also have a... Turtle cycle, a full with a trash can and a rabbit on it. This is what you see the turtles move around in where they're not on skateboards. 
and it's kind of cool to see that they have it here and they're even showing off other products they're wanting to sell to you as well this is very effective the van itself is a piece of junk it's cheap plastic and it's all tacky stickers but you have to imagine a kid being like, wow, the van from the cartoon, I can finally have all the turtles moving around, and it was very cool, and you had to have it. And there's also some cool factors about it. You actually fit more than, like, one or two figures in this thing. And you know what? The turtle cycle, sidecar, everything here just screams of the cartoon because they found it, and Donatello made it work. And there you go. It just built out of tray junk that he found lying around on the street, so it makes a lot of sense. I mean, that might explain why there's no vehicles in the street. We have all kinds of mutants taking them and turning them into cool merchandise. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think that's exactly what happened here. Now, the commercial, again, uses cartoon moments because I think they're really trying to tie in that connection here. And that's how all of your great toy franchises were. They had a wonderful show to back it up, and it's incredibly fun. I mean, after all... Every kid wants to imagine a giant ninja turtle and a samurai rabbit driving around the streets, people going, what? And don't forget, there's another guest character that shows up as Genghis Frog, driving along with them in the turtle van. So, if you thought that you were just going to be limited to toy figures, nope, we're going to get vehicles. And boy, are we going to get some vehicles. This is still early in the actual toy run of it so they're getting the staples out there right at the beginning i love the stickers they have the foot stinks this is so 90s it hurts now you guys let us know did any of you own any of these vehicles i owned a lot of the figures i had a nice collection of it but i really didn't have many of the vehicles because i was more to just the figure characters themselves for display purposes so now that we're done with the party wagon let's take a little step into the future moving ahead from 89 to 90 we're going to take a look at the disguise turtles when they started to have some fun with some of the clothes and other things they wore in the actual cartoon. However, they did take quite a few liberties, because I honestly don't remember Raphael ever wearing a spacesuit. <laughs> Now's the time to strike! Cool, stop Shredder! Leonardo can't, he's off in the Far East! And Michelangelo can't, cause he's sewer surfing down under! Why bomb? And Raphael's on maneuvers in orbit! A total space cadet! There's no stopping me! <laughs> but wait! It's Donatello! He's been in disguise all this time! And so were the rest of the turtles! It was all a trap for Shredder! Don't you just love it when the foot trips up? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles! From Playmates! Oh, isn't that great? Look at all the disguises. We got a spaceman, a samurai, surfer, and someone wearing a trench coat and a mask. How are they actually setting up a trap for a shredder? You lost Raphael into orbit, Mikey's surfing away, Leonardo's in Japan, and Dantel's running around the streets dressed in disguise, and it looks like he's going to get arrested for uh, showing what's really underneath that trench coat, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I did not get the point of this. It's like, all right, disguises. Is that what we're going with? Really, a space outfit disguise? I mean, even for a Halloween costume, that doesn't work. What disguises? This is just, let's put the turtles into wacky outfits and see what they look like just because we can. So already in 1990, you can see now we're running out of ideas. Now we're like, oh, well, we've done every turtle idea we could do. Now we're just going to randomly come up with four different outfits that have no connection at all. Because I will admit, the Leonardo in the Samurai outfit is actually very cool. The Donatello figure is of note because they did wear that disguise in the cartoon. But Michelangelo's outfit makes no sense because the outfit... Is that really a disguise? It's just him wearing a pair of glasses surfboard. Is that really a disguise that he's wearing? No, these people look like they're dressed to go on vacation. <laughs> Except right, for right. Donnie. Donnie's doing something totally illicit. He's sneaking around on Shredder. He really is. I don't know what he's up to. He's like, but you have to also remember, the Donatello disguise is actually a joke outfit disguise. Because don't you see he has the cow gun that, that he has there. So yeah, that's what we've moved up to now. They're trying to make as much money as humanly possible. They're still using the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. There well, I tell you what, as long as you don't sing it, we're fine. This is Vesper. All right, let's move on to the next one. Don't sing it. I mean, do you hear this, guys? All right, so let's move on to number four. And now we got another gimmick that I think a lot of you are going to remember. Now they're going to do something that is interesting, but aesthetically makes no sense because, wow, wouldn't that hurt? But yeah, let, let's show you. It's called... Storage Shell Turtles from Playmates. I think you're going to find this a very interesting gimmick. Hey, that piece is mine! No, it's mine! Would you guys stow it? That should be easy for heroes on the hinge. Tap shell, the Storage Shell Turtles. Well, back up! Why, well, you're right! The Storage Shell opens to reveal an assortment of wacky weaponry. There's a specialized arsenal for Michelangelo, Leonardo, Donatello, and Raphael. Pretty handy. Especially when the foot strike, then the turtles can reach back and really shell it out. Yeah, we got our rear end covered. Ninja Turtles. 
from Playmates. Yep, I remember these things as a kid and I thought they were absolutely cool. As a kid, I absolutely liked the idea of this for one reason, one reason alone. It gave me a place to put all those nice plastic accessories where I wouldn't lose them. And that's exactly why they came up with this. There must have been so many kids complaining of all the accessories that these figures came with. Some of these figures came with 10 or 12 items, and it's like they keep losing them. Well, now we have a solution for that. You are going to be able to store them all right on or in the figure. You are not going to lose anything anymore. Even the front has places you can put weapons. The back has places you can put weapons. You can put it on the inside of the shell. You can put it in the shell. Like, there's so much storage on these little figures, and they're all the same size as the regular figures. That's cool. It's kind of disgusting to think about it, but they had to cut out their... The back of their inside so you can throw all this junk in. Hold know, on a second, Ramses. None of that matters anymore. I just noticed something. Did you notice Leo's eyes are almost touching and becoming one eye? They're getting closer and closer together. Can we please get back to the purpose of this commercial? Hey, hey, they're it? showing cartoons in their commercials. So I feel I need to critique their commercials like I'm critiquing one of those episodes we like to watch. Since when did Mikey use a boomerang, a mace, a battle axe, and it looks like he's storing a pizza in there too. Well, that makes sense. Michael Andrew would carry a pizza around, but they all come with weird things. Like I think, uh, what, one of them has a grappling hook, one of them has like a little saw, one of them has like a- Oh, come on now, guys. But what'd you think of the storage shell concept? Like it's just a door that opens. It seems like such a simple idea. I mean, why didn't they think something like this sooner? Well, it's right. obviously decided to do it after they put out all the storage stuff for it. So you had to buy all that. And they're yes, like, yes. you know, we could have done this to begin with. But if we did that, we couldn't sell you all these fabulous accessories for your toys. Ramsey, just stop overanalyzing it. This is just a way to entice parents to buy this toy over the other ones so they can keep all their kids' crap together in a single toy. And you know what? If they lose it, they lose it. And that's on the kid, not you. We showed you the party wagon. Well, you need another iconic vehicle from the show. And there was another iconic vehicle that they would use often. And it was... The Turtle Blimp, 1988 Playmates commercial, and this is very, very different than the Party Wagon. That's why we're going to show you. It's not just another piece of plastic. Well, you're going to have to see it for yourself to see exactly what this is. 1988, the Turtle Blimp. What is that? Come on, guys. Welcome aboard the Turtle Blimp. Does this thing actually work? Just watch. It's the turtle's gigantic and wacky attack aircraft, the Turtle Blimp, featuring pistol grip and wacky bombs with trigger release. Cowabunga! And of course, with the detachable turtle glider, the boys can drop in anytime for pizza or punch. From Playmates. I have two things to say about this commercial. First thing I want to say is this is really ambitious as a toy, a blimp. Really? Look how big this stupid thing is. Yes, it's a beach ball on top of a toy, but still, very cool, very good idea. And then the second thing I'm going to say about this commercial is, do you know how easy it is to shoot a blimp? Yeah, it doesn't seem very practical. I think the toy is awesome. I think its usage in the cartoon is cool, too. And where are they going to store it in the sewers, for crying out loud? Yeah, they never really show that. In the cartoon, they were always just flying on it suddenly when they needed to get some air support. The toy is very cool, but I can't believe that many kids did not have trouble keeping this in one piece. I'm sure this thing was very expensive also. It's a very big device here. That well, also, look at the size of the kid playing with this. These toys are definitely made for kids probably about half his age. But imagine a six or seven year old trying to use this bulky thing. You have to hold it like a, a handle in your fist as you're carrying around. And I'm sure it requires adult assembly to blow up the thing. Very awkward using, but I like where they're going there. This is very unique. You did not see a toy like this in any other toy lines. It even had missiles that drop with the push of the button. That's very cool. A very bulky, heavy thing. You could fit all four turtles on it. Very ambitious, like Vesper said, but I just can't see this as very practical. Well, another thing that also runs through my mind, if I was a parent, would be, gee, there's six bombs that detach, there's a missile in the front that detach, the balloon detaches, and the plastic detaches. My kid's going to lose every single piece of this in a week. That being said, this is a staple of the turtles, and in these nice earlier commercials, as you've seen, they love to stick true to the television series, and that they've done here. Yeah, they actually show moments from the cartoon itself where they're using the blimp. Later on, you're going to see lots of characters never showed up, lots of weird things never showed up. This showed up many times, as I said, so that was cool that they integrated this. If anyone had this, let us know. And don't forget, they still end this. It's the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles song. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And I'm sure that will not 
Father Vesper over time as we keep hearing this. What are you talking about? It's already, like, grating on my ears. Oh, Vesper, it'll be fine. Anyway, let's move on to the next one. So now we're going to head on to 1991 as we move further in the timeline. And now, like I said, they're losing a lot of ideas here. But it doesn't mean this is bad. This is going to be actually interesting. These are called the All-Star Sewer Sport Turtles. So they're going to put all four turtles into sport themed situations which is kind of cool it's unique sports was all the rage in the 1990s still is but in a different way let's see what sports they picked for all these hurdle characters 1991 playmates all-star sports turtles here we go three two one hey there sports dudes in baseball tonight grand slam and rap slam dig it unfortunately the ball didn't go anywhere because it was attached to a pole in football, TD tossing Leo's making sure the foot aren't having a ball. In basketball, slam dunking Don's becoming a real basket case. And in wrestling, we find shell slam and Mike pinned by his python. More sewer sports all stars coming up, but now a word from our sponsor. From playmates, dudes. Well, now, that was different. And do we know why it was different, Ramses? Well, they used a live action turtle. No animated moments in this one, actually. Yeah, and why is that? Oh, well, the movie came out in 1990. There's a year after so now everyone's getting used to the idea of live action turtles representing the turtles that's right because this is going to be the best live action you're going to see and you know what they're cashing in on all the greatest sports and the turtles even in the cartoon love to play sports but they never went that far as to where a lot of the get-ups they're wearing we have Raphael in a baseball outfit and he has his own little bat that he is on oh, the ball wait. do you notice that his uniform is definitely not that of the New York Mets it looks more like the Yankees oh no how can he be such a seller but yes uh, I did notice that we will move on twice that we have Leonardo on football yeah as the leader of the turtles I guess he'd be a quarterback, quarterback. quarterback. Yeah. But why is he playing for San Francisco yeah you're right he is wearing red and orange that's weird oh they all have sports actions here yep there he goes he's throwing it Let's see, oh, they have Donatello in basketball, and he's wearing number 23. You do know who number 23 was, right? Oh, yeah. Why is he taking over for Mike? Why is he taking over for the real MJ here? But, yeah, he has the action where he can throw the ball. It comes out like a little, like, trash can uh, basketball hoop. Another sport, but this fits for Michelangelo because he still thinks that wrestling is real sport. Wait a second. At this time, everybody still thought wrestling was... Ah, uh, yes. So, was don't confuse people. Yes, it was. It's sports entertainment. Ah, yes. Now, what action does Michelangelo do? He just sort of does weird backflips. Oh, he's yeah. doing our favorite. Yeah, so, yeah, he must be a Ric Flair fan. So I guess he go. is trying to be the man by beating the man, or in this case, beating the snake. <laughs> now, isn't the live-action turtle doing the talking associate Michelangelo? I don't even think this turtle is an actual turtle. I think it was just like some other mutant turtle showed up and was like, oh, I'm such a big fan of the turtles. Can I borrow some stuff? And he took Michelangelo's armbands and he put on Raphael's mask and he's talking like a weird version of Michelangelo, sort of, kind of. Quite frankly, y'all talked alike. In the cartoon series, Raph wasn't this edgelord like he is in the movie. Now, this costume is very shoddy looking. Like, the teeth are weird, his facial expression is weird, he looks all shiny and plasticky. But you can see there's a very low budget. And of course, the commercial ended with our favorites, and they're still using the song. Now, do I need to remind you of it? Yes, I think I do. No, no, please, no, stop it. You're, you're getting this close. Have a little fun. It's not that big a deal. It's a song. It's, it's a, a song that's played for nine years straight uh, in how many nose commercials? All right, all right. Wait, wait, we'll stop with it. Yeah, yeah, we, we don't need to go there. All right, so now let's move on to the next commercial, which very clearly is, as we move on in the timeline, going to be the cartoon-based figure. So now we've gotten to the point where we come full circle. So now we're very clearly going to say, yes, we are making figures based on the cartoon, Instead of trying to trick people into mixing footage with the cartoons, we are very clearly on the package going to say tune-based figures. This cartoon series has been on for many years. We're now very clearly making figures based on it. Let's see how they did. This should be very interesting. Hey, Michelangelo, what's happening with the turtles? Well, us Toon Turtles, you know, from the turtle cartoon show, spent the day fighting Shredder in the foot using the turtle tune cycle. After that, we started acting crazy. Bandana spinning, eyes bulging, tongue sticking out, head spinning. So, we decided to relax and have a picnic with all our friends. Wow, sounds like fun. Yeah, dude, we had ice cream and jelly pizza. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Toon Turtles. Oh, what do you think? The actual characters from the cartoon series. We've finally done it. 1993, they finally incorporated the cartoon into the series. Let's give them a round of applause. They did it. We're very clearly and blatantly going to make 
figures based on the cartoon now, which they should have done all along, actually. Except for the fact that I don't remember once of Leonardo's eyes shooting out of his head, Donnie's tail of his bandana spinning around like that, Mikey sticking his tongue out like a frog, only Genghis Frog did that one. And, you know what? If Raph did that in the cartoon, his neck would have broke. Yeah, the head spinning thing's a cool trick. Like, the exorcist, I guess he wants to swing something scary. Well, that pizza was pretty scary, let's be honest. What they did here was, they made Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon characters, as you've seen with the other characters, they're just straight from the actual cartoon and look like they're from the cartoon, where the Ninja Turtles kind of don't. A little bit, but it's really the supporting characters that are very accurate. Like when they bring in all the newscaster friends and they bring the neutrinos, they're very, very cartoon accurate. But then when they do the turtles, it's like they turn them into the Looney Tunes or something. They look happy and they're goofy looking, but I think the other characters look more tune-like than the turtles themselves. You tell they went overboard, because when you see the turtle cycle, they have a giant head of Raphael on it, which makes no sense. Yeah, why would you be driving? I mean, in the cartoon, did you ever see them driving around with, I'm going to put a picture of my face on a vehicle for reasons that don't make sense. Yeah, that was a little over the top, but I do love the uh, figures themselves. I love the burn, I love the Irma, and then they have Vernon. I mean, it's like, yes, it's weird playing these characters, but if you want to relive the stories from the cartoons, now you finally can. And I think every kid always wanted to do that. It's like, why don't they make the characters from the show? Well, they finally did, and I'm happy they did. I feel that it was like two ideas merged into one. They call it Toon. And I can see where they're going with the Turtles. They want to do cartoon, as in, you know, Looney Tunes. But That's then... They just made all the other figures look exactly like they were from the actual cartoon, which is cool. But, like I said, I feel they missed the point of this. But, that being said, the human characters are easier to give more details to than the Ninja Turtles. In which, what they really did was just give them different colored skins, basically, to make them look a little bit more detailed. And their weapons are the same colors as bandana, which is weird. Well, at least... They used the neutrinos when they went with tunes because, quite frankly, I can't think of any more toonish characters than those three. Now, the best part of this is it still ends with a new version of your favorite. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles! Toon Turtles! Oh, wow! They just sped it up to make it sound cartoonish. With a whoosh sound. At least they did something a little different with it, but crying out loud. I think it's great! Teenage Mutant Ninja... Ow! Investor, you're getting a little close there. What's going on here? I was just, uh, reminding you. Are we gonna do this? Alright, whatever. Let's move on to the next commercial. Between 92 to 97, there was a lot of just animal, animal, animal characters and turtles in all sorts of disguises and different themes. Let's see what they did later when they ran out of all that stuff. They started to really make changes. As the cartoon was changing, so was the toy line. They're gonna really play up on the whole idea that this is a world of mutations and craziness. Let's see what they came up with in their mutations toy line by Playmates. Once upon a time in the sewer, there were four cute little turtles. Who suddenly went through this incredible mutation process and became the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles! <laughs> and then there was a sweet, charming rock musician. Who goes out of control, changes and mutates into Bebop! Oh my my! Look, they've decided to play together. <laughs> and of course, they all live happily ever after. Now they mutate. Some playmates. So there you go, mutation. So now Playmates is pulling a Transformers. It's like, why don't we see them turn from their original version into the mutated version? I think it's a great idea. Or is it getting a little more intricate, a little more advanced, and we're really trying to play up on the whole idea that these are mutant creatures. One form turns into another, so you get two for the price of one type of tool. And you know what? It still looks like it's still just a regular Ninja Turtle, except a little bit wider to hide their hidden parts so they can transform, which... There's nothing wrong with that. And by the way, there are many more figures in this Mutations than what you see here. There's even an April O'Neil. And they actually had an episode based on that character, little note, so you guys should check that out. But yeah, everyone was getting on the Mutations in the Turtle line. They had humans, they had the Turtles, they had Predator, they had Bebop and Rocksteady. So yeah, this was a great toy line. I actually didn't own any of these figures, but these are very cool. I kind of wish I did have some of these. I love the idea that to start out with the original versions and change them into what we all recognize them as seen on the cartoon. So again, playing with the cartoon theme, here we go again. They're showing the original version and what they became. And I also want to point out, these also came with accessories. They're not showing it in the commercial, but they did have their weapons with them as well. But... Overall, this is a very much so a step, I think, in the right direction because the original Turtles toys were just too simplistic. And now you're showing a little bit more depth for the old 
older child who is watching this instead of the younger child with the original toy. And I think it had to do this. The toy line is now reaching towards the end of its toy line. The cartoon is already in a weird phase here where it's now in the red sky and it's all different. But now we have to up our game a little bit. And I think this worked. I don't know how well the toy line did because like I said, it was towards the end of it, but it was a great idea. And I, I kind of like the idea that uh, we get to see the origins of the characters and then we get to turn them into it and you can keep changing them back and forth. That gives you lots of play possibilities if you want a different storylines as you do. And you know what the greatest thing about this commercial is, Ramses? No, no, what's that? We found one odd commercial without that stupid Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Sadly, yes, you're right. I'm hoping it'll come back again. I, I was very sad not to hear it. Let's get to the end of the toy line and show where they went to as we get to number nine. And you guys are not going to believe where this toy line wound up. And a lot of you probably won't remember this because I'm sure most, if not all of you, were not into the toy line at this time. But yes, there is an end to the toy line, like Action Masters ended Transformers. But what ended Turtles? That would be Newton Mutations and Dinosaurs. Right. So let us show you this commercial. 1997. Let's see how the Playmates toy line ended. Mutant Masters, it's always darkest before the dawn of time. Captain, fire, wind, water, and thunder transform these spirits to live again in Mutant Masters Turtle Warriors. Then evolution reared its terrifying dino head, and with Stego Rap, Toronto Don, Tricera Mike, and Angle Leo's help, Tyrano Shredder's about to face total extinction. New Dino Turtles and new Mutant Masters from Playmates. Oh wow, so they pretty much became Power Rangers and Dinosaur Turtles. That's how we ended everything. Let's have them fight a Dinosaur Shredder. I mean, really? Is that where we're going with all this? Yep, you can definitely see here, they had zero ideas left for this series. So this is two years past when they stopped airing new cartoons. So they're just like, you know, that Power Rangers show is awful popular. And I know boys love dinosaurs. So let's go with that. But what does that have to do with turtles? Absolutely nothing. But you know something? Everyone liked Power Rangers and dinosaurs. So you know something? That's what we're going to do. Jurassic Park was out three years before this. Power Rangers have been going on strong. Why can't we get in on that? Maybe we'll revive the whole series. We'll make a whole new show. Dinosaurs and turtles. Oh, this will be great. Oh, this is going to be wonderful. Nope. And this was not successful at all. And it went out with such a weird and strange way. They just took the idea of the mutations from a few years ago and just went all in on it. Everybody wants all their toys to transform and have action power. In hindsight, I wish I had these because it's so obscure and weird. I kind of wish I had these just for the uniqueness of it. I believe that these are more rare because I don't even remember seeing these in the toy shelves back in 1990. I don't even remember these. They saw a little too much of that Japanese anime. Overall, here's another great thing. They finally decided, since this is our last commercial ever, we don't have to remind them that this is Playmates because... That jingle is now officially gone from all their commercials. Oh, oh, it's gone, huh? Well, uh, well, I'm gonna sing it right now. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, turtles in a half shell, turtle power. That's it. Ow, stop, no, wait, no, no, just kidding, stop. Please Ninja kick. Well, we've taken care of that. Let's wrap it up. I'll give a call to Ramsey's here. So what did you think about it, Ramsey? Oh, uh, well, <laughs> oh, yeah, yes, Doctor. Yeah, 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 over there, please. I thought that was a lot of fun, Vesper. It was a fun look back at Turtle Toys. I had a lot of these. I still own a lot of these, and maybe one day we'll show you my collection. Ow, what do you mean three broken phones? Vesper! Hey, you're lucky it wasn't more. But now that we've gotten our phone in from our on-the-scenes reporter, Ramsey's over there. Well, we have to wrap this up, uh, Vesper. I hope you all enjoyed our edition of Back in Time. Fun looking back at all the Playmates commercial of the Turtles figures. Boy, what a fun experience this was back in time. And thank you again for joining us. Don't forget, as always, to like, comment, subscribe, and please ring that bell. So we can bring you many more like this in the future. Let us know what you thought of this and let us know what characters you like, what figures did you own, and we'll see you all again next time on Back in time, I'm Vested Retro Reviews. Now, Doctor, yeah, please give me another injection. I'm yeah, ah, uh, uh, oh, that's better. Ah, uh, all right. Vester, I'm gonna need some time off. That's fine. You don't have to come in till tomorrow. Oh, wow. Until tomorrow, Vester, wait a minute.